Hi, Garden Rebels. Hey, well, today we are on a mission. I want to show you five-ish plants that I think you'll want to know about. These are new plants. These are different plants. These are plants perhaps you've never heard of. And I want to show you some uses for them in your garden or your hanging basket or, or your container. So, let's get started. I have to show you this guy. This guy? Take a look. This little guy is called Mercadonia. And the neat special, it's my first choice. It's number one on my list. There's no particular order. Is that these, this is a great annual. So this will last you six full months of beautiful yellow colored blooms. And when I say covered, it can be literally covered in that you can barely see a green leaf on there. Now, a lot of folks don't know about this particular annual, but if you're looking for something really tight, like moss tight in your container, this would be a choice. I've got to show you a, a basket that Ryan uh, planted up by the coffee bar. It's like a good morning every morning. It has the scotch moss in it, which that lime green with the yellow. So I'm gonna, as the season goes on, it's gonna trail and it trails about, oh, I wanna say six, eight inches nice. Let me show you number two. It's this guy right here. This is Ceanothus. And if you know Ceanothus, I think you'll really be surprised by this one. Take a look. It is a, variega a variegated one plant. This will do you well if you have hot sun and also if you aren't that great of a water still needs water right you can't not water but if you forget to water this is something you'll have to ask yourself am i truly a good water or am i just so so good in containers by the way and good in the ground now this one is also much more compact the amazing thing about most of the ceanothus is that sky blue bloom. Sky blue bloom that looks like right there. So it can be so bloomy, so filiferous that you, there will be a time in the late spring, early summer that it will be so covered it's very difficult to see a leaf. That bloomy. Let me show you quickly how you can use this in the garden. There, we know that this is gonna get three to four feet tall. Here's an idea. Notice the little bit of yellow in that leaf. Let's bring that out. So here is a chorus ogon. That could bring that out and you can add in two to make a group of three. If you like, this is a small leaf. This is a grass. You can also add in a large leaf guy. Try something like this. Adds in a touch of red on here. This would be a good one for morning sun. This variegated leaf can be a touch sensitive for that blazing hot sun. So if you wanna just do morning sun, add in a type of heuchera to get a cluster of three. Another side note is you can 
take this cluster of three and repeat it another two times. So three clusters of three. Moving right along, number three, I've jumped down to the vegetable section. And what do I have here to show you is this structural, phenomenal, amazing plant. This looks like an artichoke, but it's oftentimes called an artichoke thistle. It is cardoon. Look at this grand specimen. Doesn't it just demand attention? This is like a diva. Just, I will get your attention. Nice thing about this, by the way, cardoon technically is edible. It isn't the, it isn't the bloom like in an artichoke, but rather the stalk that is edible. And there's a little bit of preparation. If you love cooking cardoon, might be something for you. Go out, chop those stalks off, take off the leaves, pare down those little thistles on those stalks and then kind of take off that skin and then you cut it, and boil it, and do all kinds of cooking things with it. So very useful. And the bloom on here, I don't have a bloom except to show you right here. That bloom is a big attractor for butterflies and bees. So it's a neat one to have and it's just so unusual and such a great, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great conversation piece plant. Like, what is that? Let me show you how to use it if you have a special area or a special container to play with. Our specimen plant in our container or in the landscape. Now this is blue. It's that beautiful gray bloom and these leaves will open up in the hot sun. So I want to play with that gray blue theme and one option is to reuse that gray blue theme with other gray blue plants. This is a type of Hebe. This is Hebe Sutherland. It's the same color but a contrast in foliage. Using that same blue color on this blue fescue, this is Elijah's blue. Now we're talking really fine. So bold, fine leaf and very fine foliage. If you want to really top it off nicely in your container is to add in some actual blue blooms. This is a calibricoa, a type of million bells that will trail off of your container or basket. And it's particularly called conga dark blue. So adding that in there, I do have to show you one that is very, very interesting. And I'm showing you this because it's always in high demand and short supply, but yet it is a really unique bloom. So take a look at this bloom. I just can only show you a bud, but at the same time, I'm showing you a picturesque photo. This is like their high school graduation photo. So yeah, that's what I look like. And this is a Datura metalloides and this one's called double lavender. It's a bloom inside of a bloom. That's why they're called doubles. The reason why I brought this one up is because folks who want just to plant their container this would be a really simple solution. This is a fun plant to have because it will tell you very easily when it needs more water. The, the leaves just start to fade away. And yet when you water, it's almost within minutes, 
that it starts to hydrate. So it's a really neat one. If it's lime green, add our flower power, and then next day almost, it is green again. So a fun one if you have, if you like uh, immediate, immediate, if you need immediate, you know, immediate. If you need that immediate in the garden. One little thing about this one, if you wanna add just a little more pizzazz, is try adding just a touch of white. This is a type of lobelia. It's Laguna Cloud White. Just adds those little light, light blooms with the big, heavy, bold blooms of the Datura. You have a magical combination. And number five, because this is the season of color, I wanted to show you a particular annual, actually a particular group of annuals, how to use those, but that are often overlooked in making combinations for your hanging baskets. This first one is called Bordeaux. This is a super tunia, and super tunia meaning that this will trail and trail and trail and trail, and it will bloom and bloom and bloom. And if you might be in one of those old time gardeners about plucking petunias, this isn't one that you ever have to touch. But I wanted to show you this one, Bordeaux, see that veining in it? And one more, it is this one right here. This is called Serfinia Rose Vein. And I wanna just give you a hint on how to put those two together. So if we have these veining type of petunias, like a Bordeaux, try, try matching one with a darker color. This one is called Serfinia Giant Blue. With this color of bloom, make for a great match. If you want to add in one more plant, a type of verbena, here is the look you get. This is a verbena called Lascar's Black Violet. Here is the color scheme that we are using as well. And lastly, I mentioned that Serfinia Rose Vein. Look at that veining in the blooms. Match that. I have very little bloom on this one, but this one is Supertunia Giant Pink. These two together make for a great match as well. If you wanted to add a verbena, try this Empress Flare Burgundy. So this mixture would make for a great basket or container as well. This is this color scheme here. Guys, that's the tips and tricks for this week. Always live your passion. Planting Bar is open.